Hello everyone, my name is David. Today we're going to take a look at another horrible case with you. On the 7th of June in the year 2023, a case emerged from room number 704 of Gita Akashdeep apartment on Mira Road in Thane City, Maharashtra. This case reveals a truth that astonishes everyone. In today's story, the victim experienced a betrayal in love, and the cost of that betrayal was so high that it had to be paid in a way no one had imagined. Let's start the story, but first, quickly subscribe to the channel and press the bell icon. The story begins on the seventh floor of Akash Deep Apartments, where there were only four rooms. Room numbers 701, 702, 703, and 704. Among these, the residents of 701, 702, and 703 lived like good neighbors. However, in room 704, a man named Manoj Sain and a woman named Saraswati lived, and both of them rarely spoke to anyone in the society, not even occasionally with their neighbors. Manoj was approximately 56 years old, and Saraswati was around 35. Neither of them attended any functions, nor did they have any friends. Now let's talk about the day this incident occurred. I'll tell you that in the apartment where Manoj lived, there were only four rooms on each floor. On the seventh floor, on the fifth of the month, a terrible smell began to spread so much that everyone came out of their homes. However, no one from room number seven on the fourth floor came out. Then, everyone in those three houses also thought that maybe a rat had died, so they thoroughly checked all the surrounding areas and cleaned their homes well, but they didn't see anything unusual. On the following day, the odor on the sixth date became even stronger than the previous day. However, they couldn't figure out the cause of this smell on that day either. Now, the day arrives, it's Wednesday, and the date is the 7th of June. A man named Salmesh, residing in room 703, knocks on the door of room 704. He senses that the strongest odor is coming from outside the door of that room, but neither Manoy nor Saraswati inside opens the door. After standing outside the door for a while, Salmesh starts hearing the sound and fragrance of a rapid room spray from inside. After that, Manoj opens the door and Salmesh tells him, Could you please check? A foul smell has been coming from around my house for quite a few days. Maybe there's a dead mouse or something in some corner of the house. However, Manoj responds, Yes, I'll check myself. I have to go to work now. And at that moment, Manoj doesn't let Salmesh come inside his house. After this, Salmesh noticed something fishy inside that house, so he quickly informed the chairman and secretary of his society. Subsequently, they sent some agents from their society, and when they also saw Manoj's house from outside, a strong, unpleasant odor was emanating. Due to this, they promptly called the police. When the police arrived a while later and tried calling Manoj, his phone was switched off. Consequently, the police had to forcibly break open the door, and as soon as they did, a terrible stench hit them, causing a couple of officers to vomit. After managing somehow, covering their noses with handkerchiefs, the police first checked a bedroom but found nothing. Next, they checked the fridge, but it was empty too. Now, the police went into the bathroom, but there wasn't a trace of blood. Meanwhile, something strange caught the police's eye. A whiteboard hanging on the wall with some math questions written on it. After that, only the kitchen was left. As soon as the police enter the kitchen, they find two buckets and a large tub. Inside it, there was nothing but blood, and underneath, some pieces of meat were scattered. Now the police's attention turns to the stove, where pieces of meat were in a terrible state on the frying pan. Finally, the police open a pressure cooker found there, revealing several boiled pieces of meat. In the midst of all this, the police also discover a large piece of flesh, resembling a human leg in a bucket. Upon witnessing this, the forensic team is called to the scene. In a corner, there were long and abundant hairs, giving the impression of a woman's ponytail. After that, the police questioned Somesh, from whom the police learned that there was another woman named Saraswati associated with Manoj. However, she had also been missing for the past few days. Upon questioning Sumesh, the police discovered that Manoj had informed Somesh that he was going out for some work and would return around 10 at night. Therefore, the police had deployed some officers in civilian clothing to apprehend Manoj. 
As time passed, the police began to suspect that Manoy might not return. However, around half past midnight, Manoy did return, reaching his floor through the lift. Seeing some commotion there, he got suspicious that he might be caught today. Therefore, Manoj tried to escape by hiding, but an agent standing near the lift cornered him and apprehended him right there. Afterwards, he was handed over to the police, and when the police asked Manoy what all this was about, he began to say that these were pieces of an animal. However, the police had little confidence in his words. When the police questioned him rigorously after a while, Manoj tells the police a story that was half false and half true. This lack of credibility in his narrative led the court to grant custody of Manoj to the police for 16 days. So far, whatever story Manoj told the police was something like this. In reality, Manoj was a resident of Ahmed Nagar, the second city of Maharashtra. He had studied at the Industrial Institute of Technology. His parents had passed away ten years ago. Manoj had his own flat in Borivali, and nearby he also had a small job at a ration shop. Manoj mentioned that he had an accident once, resulting in a significant amount of blood loss from his body. Due to a shortage of blood, he received some bottles, one of which, unfortunately, belonged to an HIV-positive patient. As a result, Manoj also became HIV positive. After that, Manoj left his Borivali apartment and rented it out for 35,000 rupees. On the other hand, he also worked at a ration shop earning 5,000 rupees. Later in 2008, he met Saraswati. At that time, Saraswati would be around 19 years old. Actually, Saraswati had three sisters. Her parents lived separately and all the sisters lived with their mother. But a few days later, their mother passed away, and all the girls grew up in an orphanage. Manoj and Saraswati first met there, where Manoj was working at the ration shop. Saraswati and Manoj often encountered each other as she visited the shop, and gradually, they fell in love. Eventually, Saraswati started living with Manoj in his apartment, and all her sisters were aware of this. However, here Manoj first told the police that Saraswati began suspecting him of having an affair with someone else. Due to this, they started having frequent arguments, leading Saraswati to decide to end her own life. After Saraswati's death, Manoj was quite distressed, and he decided to dismember the body. However, all of this was a plot by him to mislead the police, and it was not successful. Afterwards, the police took custody of Manoj and conducted a rigorous interrogation. Subsequently, Manoj narrated a new story that they had also gotten married in a temple known only to Saraswati's sisters, to the extent that even Manoj's uncle and other relatives were unaware of it. Saraswati often accompanied Manoj to the orphanage where she grew up, and due to their significant age difference, she introduced Manoj as her uncle in various places, including the orphanage. Saraswati had taken the 10th 8th grade exams but failed. Consequently, Manoj encouraged her to retry the exams, tutoring her at home. However, in May 2023, things took a turn for the worse. Manoj revealed that the grocery store where he worked closed down, leading to financial difficulties at home and escalating conflicts between them. Despite having a rented flat for RS35000, the disagreements intensified, eventually culminating in Manoj stabbing Saraswati with a knife one day. Post this, he realized the gravity of his actions. To erase evidence and evade the police, he brought a woodcutter, machine, and some fragrant oils and room spray from the market. Later, he used the same cutter to chop pieces of Saraswati, boiled them in a pressure cooker. It was also heard that he ground several pieces of Saraswati in a mixer and flushed them in the toilet. Additionally, some pieces were fed to stray dogs outside the society. Well, there's no solid evidence in the eyes of the court, it's just a story. Due to this, the police face challenges in proving the motive behind Manoj's murder or whether he really harmed Saraswati or committed suicide. If it's suicide, there should be evidence, and if Manoj attacked her with a knife, there should be injuries. However, with Saraswati's body in over 100 pieces and some items still missing, it's unclear if it's even human remains. One thing is evident, Manoj is quite cunning, erasing all evidence that could have led to his punishment. After this, 
the police kept Saraswati's DNA samples and some essential items related to the body, which could be useful in the investigation. They handed over the rest of the pieces to Saraswati's sisters, and with those pieces, they performed the final rites of their sister, which is quite a heart-wrenching matter. What are your thoughts on this case? Please write your comments in the comment box. If you enjoyed our effort, don't forget to like and share this video. If you haven't subscribed to our channel yet, quickly subscribe.